All right, let's take a look at Orb and how the race began. Well, as they break from the gate, Orb settles unusually further back than at least I thought he would. But the biggest reason that he is so far back early, he was 15th in this pack, is because these horses were on their way to the fourth fastest half, first half, and first three quarters in Derby history. So Joel Rosario, since the fast pace, put Orb back where he wasn't getting bumped around and where he could save some horse as these front runners were surely to come back through the latter stages of the race. Again, he's not in any trouble, he's not losing much ground, and he's in a perfect spot relative to how fast they're going up front, which very few expected. As they turn for home, at least as they bend, make the bend and turn for home, Joel's already picking off horses. He has to go a little wide here, about six wide, but it's okay because he saved a lot of ground in the first turn. Now they straighten up and he takes dead aim on these horses in the middle of the stretch. Palace Mouse is up there, Oxbow's on the front rail. But Joel Rosario on orb has calculated his move perfectly, has saved quite enough horse for a long stretch drive. What a, what a decision-making process for him. And if you look back from behind, Golden Soul and Revolutionary both had rail-running trips all the way around. Orb was about six horses wide all the way around the second turn. Much the best of those. As we did predict, Verrazano was stalking the pace in an out, outward position in the clear with Johnny Velasquez. He had no answer when John asked the question turning for home. He had no repulse when Orb came by. He was done at the top of the stretch. And that was probably a result of being too close to a radioactive early pace. The top four finishers all came from well back in the pack. Fourth place, Normandy Invasion. The top five, my loot, the fifth place finisher also rallied from far behind. Any of the horses close to the pace, as you see Palace Malice backing up alongside Verrazano, had absolutely no chance the way this race was run. Golden Sense was in a position he had never been in before, having been outrun so, so much by Palace Malice early in the race. Kevin Krieger imploring him to run as he hit the top of the stretch, but he was finished far before this. Struggles home way back in the pack today. Yeah, he is stopping to a walk right there. Not the way Kevin Krieger, the confident Ke Kevin Krieger, had envisioned it. You see, he's basically just pulling up Golden Sense right here before the horses even get to the last 16th of a mile. Joel Rosario on orb won this Kentucky Derby by knowing how fast they were going early in the race, putting him back in the pack, saving some ground, had enough left for the finish. And by sitting on top of a Cadillac. <laughs> and, and Orb, the question of whether he could handle a sloppy track answered in resounding fashion. Orb is a Malibu Moon Colt out of Lady Liberty by Unbridled, bred by the owners, Janney and Phipps. Here's your complete order of finish. Orb, Golden Soul, Revolutionary, and Normandy Invasion make up the Superfecta. Then My Loot, Oxbow, so Rosie and Gary Stevens finishing right uh, one behind the other. In lines of battle will take charge. Charming Kitten, giant finish in the middle of the pack. Overanalyze, Palace Malice, the early pace setter. Java's War, who broke so poorly as is his custom. Verrazano, who faded as you've documented. It's my lucky day who got a lot of late money and money during the middle of the day, didn't do anything at all. Then Frack Daddy, Golden Sense, Vijack, Falling Sky, where the complete order of finish, Falling Sky finishing last. And of Todd Fletcher's celebrated quintet, he gets a third place finish with Revolutionary.